Let me give a moment for Miss Andrea Fitzgerald to introduce herself. Turning the mic over to you. Great, thank you. Hey everyone, I am happy to be here. Uh, yes, I am the Director of Admissions at BYU Law. Uh, I actually did my undergraduate here at BYU in medical laboratory science. And so my journey into the legal field was a little bit different maybe than some, a little more non-traditional. But I worked as a medical laboratory scientist for a few years in some hospitals and liked it, but decided that I didn't really want to do that as my career for the rest of my life. And so I decided to go to law school because I felt like, number one, it would be fun. I was right. It was fun. And being an attorney was fun. But also I felt like with a JD, I would have a lot of opportunities and I would be able to do a lot of different things in my life that I might like to do. And so I figured it would open a lot of doors. I was right about that as well. Um, I went to the Southern Methodist University Deadman School of Law for law school. And after I graduated, I clerked for a federal judge in Fort Worth, Texas. It then worked at a small litigation firm in Dallas where I had a ton of fun representing clients and uh, doing trial work and litigation, depositions, hearings, those kind of tons of fun for me at least. Uh, I did that for several years and then I decided that I really wanted to be able to help other students achieve their dreams of going to law school like I did and kind of find their own path to success and so I decided to uh, work here in admissions, and I'm very privileged to be here at the BYU Law School. I love it, and um, I've enjoyed every minute of my job since I started. I think, Sorry. I think you're, yeah. oh, I'm like a mute button. <laughs> Um, wow, like that is so amazing. And there's so many things I want to like double click on and ask you more about, and I'm sure we'll get to them um, as we talk through. Um, I mean, first off, it's so lovely to hear someone say you loved law school and you love the work. And also you love the work that you're doing right now with admissions. That's, I don't want to say refreshing, but it is refreshing <laughs> to hear that. Um, you know, a lot of times you hear like, you know, law school, it's a lot of boring reading and all that so I you know amazing to hear you say that I'm like uh I think I'm in the same boat <laughs> yes um so first off um, I have a bunch of you know applying to BYU law questions for you and I want to start really general um you know from your perspective what is the right fit what kind of student is the right fit for BYU law and what are you guys looking for in a student? So I would say, first of all, and I don't think this is uh, necessarily unique uh, to BYU Law. This is probably true for all law schools. I would say, number one, someone who's hardworking. I would say that law school is probably going to be quite a bit different than what most people are used to in undergrad. So in undergrad, you know, you can, a lot of people can get by and even do really well. Um, not really reading the assignments, not preparing for class, maybe uh, studying for your test the night before, doing your paper the night before, you know, that kind of, that kind of thing can work okay and even well for some people in undergrad. You're going to need to have uh, quite a bit of discipline and some really good study habits when you do law school, though. And so, you know, I say, first of all, um, someone who's going to succeed really in law school in general and also at BYU Law is going to be someone who is willing to work hard and is really invested in what they're doing and really wants to do well. Um, also for BYU Law in specific, and maybe this is true for other law schools too, but I'd say for in particular for BYU Law, I say also people who really wanna be part of something that's bigger than themselves. So we have a lot of students who come here who are just really looking to benefit society. They really wanna help people, they have you know, certain um, social issues in mind um, that they would really like to be able to help people with. 
in a legal way. And uh, so that's one of the reasons why they're here. And so if you really find yourself being wanting, being someone who really wants to be a part of something big like that and really make big changes in the world, then I think you would fit in well here with the, the other students and the faculty. Um, also, people, I would say a lot, our students in general are very kind and very tolerant of each other and other people's views and beliefs. So if you're a nice person and you like to be around nice people, I think you would fit in really well here. Um, I would say that, um, I would say that in general, it's true that law school is pretty competitive. Um, and I think part of it is just that people who tend to go to law school and people who tend to want to become attorneys, I think maybe just have a little bit of a competitive nature sometimes um, innately, and that's great. But I, what I don't really see happening a lot here at our school is more like that cutthroat kind of competition that you hear about sometimes. I don't know if those stories are true or not. You hear stories about like people ripping out pages or library books and stuff. So that's not the kind of thing that happens here. So if you're the kind of person who feels like you can only get ahead by pushing someone else down, I don't think you would find BYU Law a good place for you. But if you're the kind of person who feels like you want to help others and kind of lift them up and that you can also um, rejoice in other people's successes without, and, and also, you know, they would rejoice in your, if that sounds like the kind of environment you're looking for, I think BYU Law could be a good fit for you. Um, also, it is for specifically for BYU Law, um, if you're wanting to graduate and not have a whole lot of debt and be able to choose what you feel like is the best employment for you without feeling pressured to take a particular job or a particular type of job because you want to pay your, you know, massive amount of debt back, then, you know, we have a lot of students who are, you know, here in part because they really want to be able to have that flexibility to choose what they feel is right for them after graduation without having to be saddled with a lot of debt. Um, so again, that might, you know, make BYU law school a good fit for you. In general, I would say like, if you're thinking about law school in general and whether it could be a good fit for you, keep in mind that there is what you see on TV and it does happen. Okay, so it doesn't happen exactly like Perry Mason, right? Like it's not exactly like that where someone literally jumps up in the courtroom and says, I did it, you got me, no, okay. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's true that there is litigation, you know, that's what I did trial work, you can do that. And you know what, maybe you love it, it's great, whatever. But if you just can't imagine yourself as, you know, Perry Mason or Legally Blonde or something like that, that's okay. Like that's not the only kind of lawyering that there is. Keep in mind that um, law school is probably a good fit for you if you really do enjoy like reading and writing and um, kind of analytical, like analyzing things, working out problems, um, those kinds of things. If you really are into like communicating your uh, position on things and really examining other people's positions and kind of trying to figure out solutions to problems that way, then law school could be a good fit for you. So, you know, you don't have to be someone who loves to get in front of an audience and entertain people or whatever. You don't have to. You can be, and that's great, but you don't have to be. But I would say that you, you should probably uh, enjoy kind of um, analyzing problems, working things out, and be comfortable at least communicating your thoughts and ideas, whether it's through writing, speaking, but at least being comfortable doing that, then I think law school can be a good fit for you. That's so, you said so many great things, and I want to touch on them all, but, you know, I, I love the emphasis on, you know, being part of the community and, you know, working together, and it's not the cutthroat things that we hear about, the horror stories we think hear about, um and you know the debt part i i see that there's a couple videos up on the byu law website about that and and you know talking about costs and i think you know i do encourage everyone who who is here in this room and who is listening to the recording go check that out because it is a really important consideration when we when we do consider law school so um thank you for pointing all of those things out and then you know whether you're fit you know not fit but whether being an attorney is, is the right fit for you. That, that's a great consideration as well. Um, going into just the application, just going right into the nitty gritty. Um, you know, there's 
the LSAT, the GPA, personal statements, all of that. Um, and as admissions, you, you receive a student's file and it, it has all of that in it. What is your process of looking at an application? Is it, you know, do you look at the LSAT score first, the GPA, the personal statement? What is your process there? So Bologna Law, I realize at least, um, I, I'm not sure if this is just something, I don't think it's something just we do. I'm not sure um, exactly what the processes might be for other schools. But for us, every application that we receive gets a full review, literally cover to cover, we read everything. And actually each application here will get at least three full read throughs and then also discussion at the admissions committee meeting. And so it's a pretty thorough review by multiple people and we do read everything. And so, you know, uh, we will look at the LSAT score, undergraduate GPA, we'll also look through your transcript. And so we re will receive as part of your application, all of the transcripts from every place that you ever took any college level courses, right? And so we'll look through them. And some of the things we're looking for is look, let's say somebody has a lower GPA, right? Something kind of lower than or median, or you know, just something that kind of stands out. Uh, we will review the transcript and look for things like, okay, did they just have like one bad semester? Or sometimes it'll be that somebody started out in one program, didn't go so well, they realized that, made a course correction, and then did great after that. Sometimes people will start college when they're very young and their scores will not be, you know, very good at first. And then they'll either take some time off or just as they mature, their grades get better. So we do look at things like how your grades have, have gone over time, you know, are, are, they, are they improving? Were they only in like certain types of courses, things like that. Uh, also, I would encourage you that if, for instance, uh, you got a lower GPA, we'll say, and you know that there's a reason, let's say that you have some personal or family or health struggles during a particular semester, even a particular year, or let's say you did try out, you know, biochemistry and said, oh no, I hate biochemistry. I can't do this for the rest of my life. You didn't do well. And then you decided to do something you really like and you got better. If you feel like that um, there could be a good explanation that you feel like would give context to the admissions committee for some part of your application, you're always welcome and invited, at least for BYU Law, not sure what rules might be for other schools, but at least for BYU Law, you're always welcome to upload an addendum. So this would be an additional piece of paper that we just have like a paragraph or so just explaining something that you think might give us further context for looking at that. So we'll look at your transcript. We'll read your letters of recommendation. Um, always want to see, you know, what kind of glowing reviews uh, your professors or if you're a non-traditional student, your, your employers might have for you. Uh, we're also going to read through your, your application itself. So we have an actual application portion where it's got some questions. One of the, you know, we'll get to see things like your family, uh, you know, if you're a first generation law student, if, um, you know, uh, I think we also have like first, um, yeah, first generation law student. And oh, also um, we have a question in there about why BYU law as well. Right. It's always kind of nice to see what it's interesting, you know, you're interested in, are you interested in a particular program that we have? Have you talked to a particular professor that you really liked? Um, is it our you know, atmosphere, the, the reputation, what about the law school is interesting to you. Uh, then there's your resume, of course, that we'll look through, mainly just looking to see, you know, what kinds of things have you done in your life? You know, have you been working? Um, do you do volunteer experience? Just kind of seeing what you're, what you've been up to, and it's kind of rounding you out as a person. And then obviously the personal statement, we read through those. Um, that can be a really good way. It's kind of, in my opinion, kind of, the best way that we can get to know you, I feel like on paper, right? Because you, for us at least, now some schools will have a prompt and you'll respond to a prompt. We don't have a prompt. It's just an open-ended, you choose what you'd like to discuss kind of a thing. So, you know, we have an opportunity just to hear about you. Like, tell us about your life. I mean, some people talk about, you know, hardships they've overcome, challenges, things like that. Some people will talk about what brought them to the decision to go to law school and how important this is for them. Some people just tell us about themselves and their lives and, you know, what makes you unique or special as a person. So we can talk about more about that later if you'd like the personal statements, but that is a really important part of the application too, to get to know you. And so basically we'll review all of that information and um, ultimately come up with a decision 
And you know, here at BYU Law, you can get an admit, a deny, or a wait list. And wait list just means that we like your application and we'd really like to be able to find a spot for you in the class, but we need to see how the class shapes up and see if we can find an open spot for you. A uh, wait list becomes a little bit more common as the cycle goes on because we do rolling admissions. And so the later in the cycle you put in your application, the, more, the less spots there may be available. And so it may take some time to see if a spot opens up for you. Got it. Well, great information there. And, you know, thank you for going through all the little steps of, of the application. Um, I would love to double click. I, I know you mentioned it a couple of times, um, the non-traditional student. Um, how does admissions view those students? You know, I, I'm also five, six years out of undergrad. So I've, I've had a little bit of a career. And so I just wonder what, what the view is um, and, and how do you take in those students? Traditional students can bring a lot of variety and diversity to a class, right? Uh, we, like, we like to see a lot of variety uh, when we're, you know, selecting and putting together a class. So we like to have a good mix of students who, who are, you know, younger, right out of undergrad, fresh and ready to go, and then also students who have a little bit more life experience too. Because uh, what we find is um, that a lot of times the students who have you know, worked for a little while, just, you know, sometimes for a long while <laughs> before they decided to go to law school, uh, they bring all that experience with them to the classroom and to the legal field. And so there's a lot that they can contribute to class discussions. There's a lot they can, you know, contribute to projects and things that they work on with people at the law school. And then also that experience and immaturity will uh, go with them into the legal field as well, you know, when they're Getting, you know, choosing a job and, you know, sometimes they kind of already know a little bit things that they like about jobs and things that they don't. And so, you know, they can um, have that experience to benefit from when they're selecting what they're going to do when they graduate. And so we find that uh, the non-traditional students are oftentimes, you know, very successful and happy when they go through their decision. So as far as how we view them from an admission standpoint, um, you know, that experience and everything can be a positive. It doesn't mean that it's necessarily a negative if you are right out of undergrad. It's just that we don't, I would never want anyone to feel like, you know, you, you have to be straight out of undergrad. If you're not, you don't have a chance, don't even try. Like that's completely the opposite. Like if you want to be law school, if you feel like it's right for you, if you feel like BYU law is right for you, you know, even if you've been out for a little while, um, you know, go ahead and apply. Also, I would say that if you have been out of the game for a little while, you know, you're probably not going to have access, for instance, to a pre-law advisement center at your college and, and things like that. Give us a call, you know, or whatever school it is that you're interested in going to, call them and talk to their admissions office about it. Just tell them like, hey, I have been out of school for how many every years? I want to go to law school now. I don't really know what I'm doing. Like, can you help me out? You know, I'm really not sure what the process is, what the timeline is. Call and ask. I mean, we're more than willing to talk you through the process. There are no dumb questions. Like, just ask, you know, just say, hey, how do I register for the LSAT? I heard I have to take this test. You know, not a dumb question. That's okay. We, we you know, we want to help. We want to help you with the process. So I sometimes I think with, non-traditional students, it can be a little daunting. At least it was for me a little bit um, going to law school when I was a little bit older because I felt like I didn't really, like other people have been thinking about this and working on it like their entire undergraduate career, right? And um, so I kind of felt like I was a little late in the game, but honestly, there's a lot of people, at least at our law school, who are willing to help. And so just ask us, we'll walk you through the process. And I think it can be, you know, really beneficial to do that. That's wonderful advice. And, and if I may ask, what what's the split in, in, a, in a class of like non-traditional versus traditional uh, students? That's a really good question. I don't know off the top of my head really what the actual um, specific numbers would be, but I can tell you that for the last incoming class, that we have the stats on, I believe the age range, I'm trying to remember, I believe the age range is something like 19 to 53 is like the range. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's a pretty big range. I will say that pro I'm going to suspect, and again, I don't have the actual numbers in front of me right now. I'm going to suspect just from what I've seen about patients coming in, 
that probably, you know, the majority of students are probably either right out of college or within a couple of years of being out of college, but we still get, a, at least we do, we get a, a fairly substantial number of students who've been out for, you know, more than a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that sounds amazing. And, and that's a that's such an interesting spread of people in a class, so that's amazing. Um, I do wanna address this question in the chat from Madison. Uh, Madison is asking um, for students who uh, transcripts from the semesters during the pandemic look at, uh, are, are they looked at any differently from transcripts from semesters prior to the pandemic? And we can't ignore that the pandemic happened this past year and a half. So how does that look different to you or admissions at BIU Law? Although we would all like to forget a little bit of everything that has happened for the last year, we can't, that's true. Uh, no, definitely when we get transcripts uh, that cover that time period when we know that painting was going on, some of the classes are virtual, some aren't, we definitely take that into consideration when we look at it for sure. Uh, because for instance, there are some transcripts that come in where an entire semester is just passed. You know, they actually didn't get grades that semester. And we know why, and that's that's fine. We don't look at that as a negative. Um, I mean, unfortunately, like whatever your GPA ends, undergraduate GPA ends up being is kind of just what it ends up being. But as far as just kind of digging deeper than that number and seeing kind of what's going on, um, yeah, we're definitely aware of what the time period of the pandemic was. And um, so when we see things like, you know, pass, 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 with like there's not really any grades or, you know, maybe, maybe during that time period, uh, grades dipped a little bit, whereas otherwise they were great, you know, we likely will realize that that's what's going on. Great. So do you think it would be appropriate to write an addendum for something like that? Or, you know, it, it's pretty obvious. I, I would say I leave that to your discretion as far as whether you think it, I mean, I would say probably if during, you know, um, spring of, of uh, 2020 and in fall of 2020, it was all pass and you didn't have any actual letter grades. We can probably figure out that's what was going on. You know, we probably figured you did not literally just sign up for all pass fail classes mm -hmm. for two semesters. <laughs> so that might be kind of obvious. But yeah, if you found that, you know, you had a particularly difficult semester, I mean, maybe you had COVID-19 or a family member had COVID-19 and that affected your ability to, to do that semester. If you feel like that's context that would that would be helpful for the admissions committee to know, I think that would be fine, at least at BYU Law, for right. you to do a short addendum on that if you feel like it would be helpful. Great. Um, and then, apologies, kind of jumping back to the requirements of the application, um, letters of recommendation. I know, you know, it's usually from professors, those of us who have been out of school and working a little bit, we might have one professor, one uh, professional uh, reference. Is there a preference to have at least one professor write one insight there? For the letters of recommendation, at least at BYU Law, we do prefer the academic letters of recommendation from professors, uh, if possible, right? So uh, one reason is just that they write better letters of recommendation generally. For one thing, they're used to doing it. They've probably been asked to do it before, or at least they themselves have PhDs usually, or at least master's degrees, and they had to ask their professors for letters of recommendation likely to do their programs. So they're kind of uh, aware of what it is that will be most helpful for us to know about the students when they write those letters. So for that, for, for one reason, that would be one reason why professors are, are they generally just do better, as a letter, better letters of recommendation for you. So I would say like if you've been out of school for a little while and you know you just are not gonna be able to get those letters from the professors, that's totally fine. I would choose then uh, an employer, a supervisor, someone that number one knows you well. Like, I mean, just, I will say as a caveat, sometimes if you have, for instance, you know, intern for a Congress, uh, a member of Congress or something like that, and you're like, oh, I, I wanna get a letter from this person because it'll have a fancy name on it. That's great. Make sure they actually know you though. It could actually talk about your work ethic, talk about the work you've done, talk about what they've noticed as far as any skills or, or attributes they think that they have seen in you that they think would um, make you a good law student and a good lawyer, right? 
-hmm. So make sure that they know you well, make sure they're familiar with your work. And also, you know, just kind of talk to them about what it is you're wanting to do. Like what did, why you're wanting to go to law school, why you want to be an attorney, like make sure they know a little bit about you too, so that they can include, you know, anything they feel might be pertinent then in their letter of recommendation. So, I mean, I would say find someone that actually knows you and knows your work well, and then talk to them about what it is that you're looking for and what would be helpful for us to know about you. Awesome. That, that's great insight. And of course, we want the letter to be personal as well. So yes. get them from people who know you. Get them from people who actually know you and are familiar with you. And, and that's a great place to start. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and I was looking on the website for um, application requirements, and there is a, a portion about the endorsement by an LDS leader or um, someone from your own faith. Um, how much does that weigh in, in a person's application to BYU law? So the ecclesiastical endorsement process is something that I think is probably fairly unique to BYU law. I'm sure there may be other uh, law schools uh, of a religious nature that might have something similar as well. So basically all it is, is uh, if you're, it does, first of all, it doesn't matter. You do not have to be a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints to apply to BYU Law School or to do the ecclesiastical endorsement process. So that's not a requirement. So we welcome everybody of all faiths and beliefs who uh, are, who are, you know, would agree to abide by the honor code that we have, which basically says just, you know, be a good person, be a nice person, things like yeah. that, right? And so uh, basically, if you're not a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, then the first step would be that you would meet with a member of your own clergy. And so of your own faith, uh, if you uh, don't have a, a clergy, a, a faith that, that you belong to and you don't have a clergy, that's fine. You can meet with a local uh, Latter-day Saint bishop if you would like as well. Um, so that would be the first step. They would get a form that they would fill out. Um, and they basically are just going to make sure that you understand uh, what is in the honor code and kind of what's expected of you and just make sure that you feel comfortable saying that you'll agree to do that. And that's kind of the first step. Second step, if you're not a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, is you would then meet with our BYU non-denominational chaplain, and he'll do the same thing. He'll go through the form, make sure that, you know, you understand what's in the honor code and kind of what to expect and, you know, get to know you a little bit, everything, and then he'll sign off on your form and you're good. If you're a member of the Latter-day Saint Church, then you would meet with your local bishop, and then you would also meet with your stake president, and they would do the same thing, do the form. As far as the importance of it, I mean, honestly, it really just comes down to, you know, look, if you meet with them and you're comfortable with what you're agreeing to do for the next three years, and they feel like that you understand and that you're comfortable with it and all of that, then that's all that is required of it. And so as far as admissions go, we really just like to see that it's been done and that you've agreed to these things and that they also have talked with you about it and say, yeah, you know, they know what they're, getting, know what they're doing and, and they've agreed to do these things. And as long as you do that, then that's really the only way that the ecclesiastical endorsement comes into the admissions process. Great. And is this something that in, you know, somebody can reach out to admissions to, you know, ask for the questions or guidance for? Definitely, definitely. If you have any questions about how to do the process, particularly if you're not a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and you're like, oh no, what does this mean? What's a bishop? What's a state president? I don't understand. Call us. We are more than happy to walk you through the process, let you know what to expect, get you information so that you can, um, you know, meet with a BYU non-denominational chaplain, things like that. Like we are more than, we have lots of time and well, we will take lots of time to help you. So please don't hesitate to contact us, email, call us, let us know if you have any questions about that process at all. Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, I want to switch gears a little bit and talk um, about the personal statement. I know you mentioned earlier that BYU Law doesn't have a, a prompt to answer for this. Um, how important is it to talk about like why you want to go to law school or, or you know, something like that or what led you to a law, legal career um, in your personal statement? So I would say that quite a few people do that. 
at least mention it or talk about it at some point. Say, it's not a requirement. So as far as how important it is, I would say it just depends on how important it is to you, honestly. Like, I think a lot of people, it is a big part of who they are, or I guess I should say um, becoming a lawyer, the reasons why they want to become a lawyer are a big part of who they are. And so they end up talking about it, right? So like some people are like, look, these are my experiences. And because of my experiences, I really want to help people that have been in similar situations or something like that. That's why I want to be a lawyer, right? So like, it's a really big part of their lives sometimes. And so if you feel like that's the situation for you, that's a great topic for your personal statement. You know, some people um, choose to do their personal statements, like I said, on like hardships or challenges that they've overcome, because that's a big part of their life, right? Because that's been that's a big part of what has shaped them as a person and it's really important to them. And so some of the people choose to talk about that and they just mention or maybe even don't even mention about why they want to be a lawyer. And that's totally fine. I think the personal statement is an opportunity for you to talk about yourself, maybe outside of what we can find out in the rest of your application materials, right? So we know that you did great in school. We know you got good grades, right? We know what your major is, we know where you've worked, the things you did there, what you know, dates you worked and whatever. So this is an opportunity for you to tell us more about yourself as a person. What makes you unique? Like what makes you shine? What experiences or what about you um, do you feel like is really shaped who you are as a person? And that can just give us a better idea of you know who you are beyond what we can find out from the rest of your application materials. So I would say if, if talking about the, re, or if the reasons why you want to be an attorney are really important to you, are really formative to who you are, then yeah, I think that can be important for you to do for your personal statement if that's what you want to do. If not, and you feel like other things are more important, then talk about the other things. Great. Yeah, it's like getting to know you moment, right? <laughs> so Exactly. It's the be- I Like I said, I personally think it can be one of the best ways to, you know, really get to know someone like kind of underneath all the other paperwork that we're going to get on you. Right. And, and, you know, people spend so much time studying for the LSAT and, you know, spent four years at least on, on the GPA. So, you know, it's nice to have that moment to, to have a human connection via the application. Exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah. And, and then um, kind of, Moving on again um, to the resume um, of the application, especially for people who have been maybe working for a bit, do, should we be explaining maybe gaps in, in the resume if we took a couple months off to travel, maybe a year of unemployment? Like, is, is there a necessity to write an addenda for that? So for the resume, I would say it really depends on your situation. So for BYU Law, and of course, you'll want to check and see what the kind of technical requirements are for applications for whatever schools you're applying to. And so for BYU Law, we ask that the resume be one page. Our personal statement, we ask to be two pages, just so you know as well. So again, check with the school you're applying to, though. Don't just assume every school is going to be the same. They may not. So we ask for a one page resume and yeah, that can be, if you've been out of school for a while and you've had some jobs and things, it can be kind of difficult to get it in a page. Um, if you can find, you know, somebody that maybe could help you, you know, proofread your resume, but it's always a good idea to have like a second pair of eyes on anything. <laughs> Honestly, like I, I, I just think it's really helpful. Even as always. a lawyer, we had multiple people review things before we filed it with the court, right? Usually because, I mean, come on, <laughs> it's like, like, you don't, yeah, you don't want to have some kind of typo in something you give to the judge. Like, that's just a bad idea. Right. So point being is same thing with your resume, like, um, you know, have someone else take a look at it, see what they think of it. Honestly, I would say when it comes to gaps, I really think it depends on, you know, a lot of factors. Like, how big of a gap were we talking about? Like, did you take, you know, years off? Well, maybe you might like to just put in there what you were doing. Like, hey, traveled the world, went to 50 different countries, right? That's exciting. Like, that's fun, you know? Um, or honestly, if you were dealing with like a health challenge or something during that time, you know, I don't know what you might, I mean, but again, I, I would say use your personal discretion, but like beat cancer, you know, something like that. Like, you know, if you feel like, the gap seems to you to be kind of pretty substantial and seems to really stick out to you, 
then it might be worth listing under like volunteer experience or other experiences or interests or things like that, right? Um, there's some really creative ways to um, kind of explain the things that you've been doing, even if they were things you didn't get paid for. And so there can also be good resources out there to kind of give you some tips and ideas of, you know, how do I translate this experience that I did into something that will make sense and look like it fits on a resume. Mm -hmm. You take advantage of those resources, you know, and see just kind of how to translate some of that experience into something that looks like it fits on a resume. But again, I say it really just depends on your situation and just kind of use your discretion about it. Great. And I assume there's some understanding that if somebody, you know, lost a job or had to press pause on a job during the pandemic, that that's something that is understandable. Absolutely. I think a lot of people's resumes are going to look, you know, different since yeah. coming through the other side of the pandemic. So absolutely, we will understand every, you know, understand what was going on during that time period and uh, read it through that lens for sure. Great, great, awesome. Um, I would love to pivot to kind of the the life at BYU Law as a law student. Um, you know, my kind of big motivator right now in applying to law school is kind of like imagining myself as a first year law student at a law school. So, um, you know, I would love to know what to expect in that first year of BYU Law. What does it look like? I know there's a core core group of classes that are required to take by first year students, but uh, give us some insight into that. Sure, so I was saying, first of all, it's gonna be hard work. Like I was saying earlier, it is, but don't be scared. I mean, there's gonna be fun too. There's gonna be opportunities to participate in the student bar association events. And, you know, you get to meet people and go to some different events. So you're, it's gonna be fun too. So don't be put off by how scared it is. I will say that I think Going to law school is a little bit like being thrown in the deep end of a swimming pool, right? But we don't want you to feel like you're out of your depth. And so at least at BYU Law, and again, I'm not sure, I'm sure other schools have some similar things as well. But at BYU Law, we, for instance, have summer workshops that we put on before your 1L year starts. So we actually started our first one for this cycle. We started our first one today. And wow. so, yeah, so uh, basically it's a series of workshops throughout the summer that are put on uh, by different departments of the law school. So like today was career development office and, you know, there'll be student life and academic development. And it's basically just kind of an introduction to what to expect uh, as a law student. And so at least when you show up for your first day, you're not completely just um, uh, in the dark as far as what to expect. We also have a, a 1L intro to law that we do that happens the uh, kind of first few days before you start your first day of classes. And so during that time, they do a lot of introduction to look, here's what to expect, like, you know, reading assignments and uh, briefing cases and making outlines and things like that, so that you feel like you're kind of more prepared as far as how to start developing those good study habits like I was talking about before. So we try to kind of ease you into it as much as we can. It's still going to be a little bit like swimming in the deep end of a swimming pool, but at least, like I said, hopefully you won't feel like you're out of your depth. Hopefully you feel like you belong and you feel like you can be successful. Uh, yes, there are core classes that you take for first years, um, and those are going to be pretty similar to what you're going to see at most law schools, you know, civil procedure contracts. Uh, property, towards criminal law, things like that. We also, you know, obviously your legal research and writing, which everyone is pumped about their first year in advocacy. Uh, we also have a course on the constitution and um, legislation and regulation that our first year students take as well. So yeah, you are going to have a set uh, block of classes that you will take your first year. And we also have a special class that we do here um, called Milestones. It's put on by our career development office. And this is kind of like your first introduction to, okay, I'm here, I wanna be a lawyer, I don't know what I'm doing, right? So they will help you start identifying your strengths and your interests, and you'll learn, start learning skills like networking and applying for jobs, and then you can start planning out your career, like basically during that first year. 
So you'll be paired with a career advisor that will work with you over the next three years and they can help you and like, you know, formulate, okay, first of all, where do you want to go? Like, do you have an idea of what you want to do? You don't, fine, not a big deal. Let's see what we can do to kind of expose you to some different areas of law and maybe you can, you know, start to find out what you're interested in. And then as you progress um, through the years, you know, they'll help you figure out what kind of externship might I do? What kind of clinic might I want to do? And what kind of networking should I start doing now if my ultimate goal is to, for instance, work as a corporate lawyer in uh, New York City or work as a government lawyer in DC or do, you know, private practice here in Utah. So anyways, we start that process with our 1Ls during the milestone class that you take during your first year. It'll be for both semesters of your first year. So, um, yeah, so, so, you know, we kind of try to help you feel like that you're doing this all with a purpose, you know, yeah, it's going to be hard, but, you know, let's look at the ultimate goal. Let's look at what it is that you're wanting to get out of this whole law school career thing and let's start working towards it. Um, and then also for our 1Ls, we do have some uh, additional opportunities and I, I, I'm sure other law schools have similar opportunities. If they do, look for these. These are great thing, ways to get practical skills. So we have like a winter's deals conference um, where you can work on transactional lawyering skills. And then as soon as your 1L, um, your 1L year is ended, we have these one week skills academies where we have trial advocacy, deals advocacy, or sorry, deals academy, um, appellate academy and a, a startup academy. And so these are an opportunity for you to go ahead and get some like practical experience and start practicing uh, in, in an area that you think you might be interested in as soon as your 1L year is over. Uh, and we also have some other um, fellowships and externships you can do the summer after your 1L year. So I would say that wherever you end up going to law school, I would definitely look for some of those practical experiences that you can do as a 1L. It's going to be limited uh, because you're going to get to do more of those practical experiences your second and third year. But whatever is available to you to do as a 1L or after your 1L year in that 1L summer, I say take advantage of it. It's a, you know, you want to get your hands dirty and get in there and start doing some lawyering stuff as soon as you can, honestly. Right. And I love the kind of programmatic support system that like BYU law has. And it, it you know, kind of, I love the, the comment that you made of like the goal is really to get you started on this career, this legal career. And, you know, to have that support from the school, that's amazing because, you know, as we spoke about earlier, sometimes it's so cutthroat and, and we forget about that and career goals. So that's wonderful. I, and it, the academies sound so interesting. I, I'm like already so interested in them. Oh yeah. I think it's, like I said, I think anytime law students, particularly, you know, just people just barely finish their waddle year. I think anytime you can get your hands in there and actually start practicing some skills. Like, honestly, I think it is well worth your time to do that. Right. Yeah. And, and in that same vein, um, I know we, you've kind of mentioned the, you know, areas of interest for, for the legal field. What are, what are like the big areas that BYU kind of is, is a rock star at and, and, you know, is going forward full force and, yeah, so we have a pretty wide variety of offerings here. And so BYU Law, and I think this is pretty uh, typical for most law schools, you don't really have like a specialization or a major when you're in law school, right? right? Uh, but you do have the opportunity to kind of take classes and things that you're interested in during your second and third year, do clinics and externships and things of stuff that you're interested in. So you can kind of, um, kind of, choose like, hey, I'm really interested in intellectual property. And so take some classes in that, but you don't really have like a major. Uh, but, but anyways, we offer a lot of different things. I would say some things that our students, so we have a lot of things that we offer, like I will try to go through all the things that I find interesting, or at least that I think that a lot of our students find interesting and we hear that there's a lot of interest in. Um, we offer quite a bit in entrepreneurship and corporate law. So obviously there's classes in that. There's also an entrepreneurship clinic where you get to work with uh, business owners, small business owners, either they're starting their business uh, or, you know, just need help doing contracts or IP or whatever it is that all the small business owners need. We also have the Startup Academy that I mentioned for after your 1L year um, in the Winter Deals Conference as well that I mentioned as far as getting some transactional help, um, transactional experience. 
Intellectual property is something else that a lot of our students seem to be interested in. Again, we have some classes. We have a really neat program called the Law X Design Lab. And so basically it's a legal design clinic and it's applying design thinking to uh, like important legal problems in society. Uh, oftentimes it's related to um, legal access issues. So they have some products that they've made. One of them was a program to help uh, individuals defend against debt collection lawsuits. They made another uh, product to help people who find themselves in a landlord tenant uh, dispute. And then most recently, they developed a program to help individuals and legislators and um, even corporate partners address uh, the expungement process and the, the trouble and difficulty it can be for people who've had a record expunged, but it hasn't actually gone away. So those are like kind of the, some of the issues that they've worked on in the past. And um, they do, you know, like I said, design thinking, and it's a really cool thing. So lots of people are interested in that. Obviously law and religion is a big thing here at BYU Law. Uh, we have the International Center for Law and Religious Studies and we host an annual symposium here. And then there's regional conferences that are international. There's uh, consultations and then also summer fellowships that you can do with the International Center for Law and Religious Studies, if that's something you're interested in. A lot of our students are, you know, interested in issues like religious freedom, and so there's a lot of activities for them. Then another neat program that I guess I would highlight is the Corpus Linguistics Program. So this is really kind of cool. It's a methodology for understanding the contextual meaning of words by analyzing um, naturally occurring language in these large collection of texts. So we were one, we were the first law school to offer a course in this field. And so we are developing a corpus of founding era English, which is looking at the meaning of words at the time the constitution was drafted. And then we're also developing a United States Supreme Court corpus, which is examining the opinions and signed orders of the Supreme Court of the United States from 1791 all the way to the present. So that's kind of an interesting project that um, I've actually um, had uh, several uh, prospective students who have uh, wanted to know more about that project because it is such a unique area that um, is not offered at very many schools. And so anyways, if anyone is interested in any of these things or would like to know more about any of the other areas of law, that we uh, have activities and classes for here, just contact us. We're happy to talk with you and get you in contact with the people who work on those projects so that you can learn more about it. But there's a lot of really cool stuff going on here at the law school. Yeah, that all sounds so interesting. I do have a note for those of you in this class right now and listening on YouTube or the podcast. Um, there is an article on the BYU website about the expungement process and, and the recent work that was done. It is so interesting, highly encourage taking a look at that. Um, and I am so interested in, in the, um, the, the examining the text and the, the English text and all that. That's so interesting. So I'm like, I'm ready to double click into that. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. I, like I said, I've been learning more and more about it. And I'm just like, this is really neat. You know, this oh. is actually, so I mean, if that's your thing, at least it can be mm -hmm. a lot of fun. Yeah, and um, I know you mentioned clinics um, a little bit. How does a student, this might be beyond a 1L student experience, but how does a student get involved with a, in a clinic at BYU Law? Yeah, so the clinics are available after your first year. So your first year, you're going to be pretty busy with your first year, uh, you know, classes, but then we do offer, like I said, some some experiential learning experiences for, for 1Ls and for after your 1L summer. But then after that, yeah, you can definitely get involved in the clinics and the clinical alliances. Um, there is an application process. Um, it's gonna kind of vary a little bit from clinic to clinic. Also, the clinics that we offer are sometimes gonna vary from semester to semester, depending on you know interest and things like that. So definitely though, that's something that you should um, start talking to us about. I mean, honestly, maybe start looking into when you are here your first year, start looking into, okay, what clinics are gonna be offered next year? You know, is there one that I'm interested in doing? If so, what's the application process? So I would say start looking into that during your first year so that you can kind of plan ahead and think about what you wanna do. But yeah, the clinics are a great opportunity for you to work with members of the community, doing helping them with their legal problems. There's a licensed attorney who supervises, of course, 
Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, it's just a great opportunity for you to try out a certain area of law that you think you might be interested in. Maybe you think you like litigation, you do some clinic work on it, and you're like, oh my goodness, I hate this. Why would I ever want to do this? But you found out before you graduated, right? But no, I mean, more often what happens is people do it and they say, oh my goodness, I love this. I love working with people. You know, I love this area of law, or maybe I just love solving legal problems or whatever. Most people actually find out that they just fall in love with what they're doing. Wow. And so it's a great opportunity for you to get out there and feel like you're helping people as well. You know, even before you graduate, you're able to help somebody in need. Got it. And are majority of students involved in clinics or, you know, is it just a small population? I would say most of our students uh, do get involved in some type of experiential learning, right? So there's clinics, there's clinical alliances. The clinical alliances have a classroom component as well. And so they're going to be involved in either clinics, clinical alliances. We also have seminars, which are semester long learning experiences at a certain place like in DC, uh, or we did start a London seminar as well that got put on pause for the pandemic, hoping to bring it back. So we have some seminars that you can do that are semester long experiences, also externships that you can do in the summertime. So I would say that most of our students probably do some kind of experiential learning um, just based on what their interests are and kind of what their commitment level, time commitment level is as well that they can give to it. Great. That's amazing. And I know we're running out of time and I have so much more to ask. Oh, no. <laughs> um, one thing I know, and it was pretty prominently on the website as well, and I'm so interested, clerkship placements. Um, yes. There, there seems to be a big program there um, and, and support there at BYU Law. Can you talk a little bit about clerkship and, and how it works at BYU Law? Yeah, so uh, our students are, you know, really good at uh, securing clerkships when they graduate. The class of 2020, 20% uh, of the class had a clerkship. Wow. Uh, and so, you know, I... I would say like clerkships can be a really good experience uh, for, for anybody, especially if you're interested in litigation. It can be a really big boost to your career if you're interested in litigation. But honestly, it can be really helpful for you even if you think you're gonna do transactional work because you get to see how the contracts and things that you're drafting for clients end up in a courtroom and how it can go poorly or well for your client depending on how you do. So anyways, point being is they can be really good experiences and yeah, it's one of those things that, look, if you're interested in that and that's something that you think you might like to do, that would be something that you would want to talk with the uh, career development office about, like that during your 1L year when you're doing your milestones class. And I guess I would say this is, this advice uh, definitely holds for whatever law school you go to, right? If that is something you have in mind, start early talking to whoever it is at your law school who kind of helps shepherd students in that process and let them know your intentions early and they can start help like guiding you and directing you for like networking or, you know, certain classes you might like to take or, you know, things like law review can be really helpful if you're interested in a clerkship. It's not a necessity, but it seems to be kind of helpful. Mm -hmm. And so again, they can help kind of counsel you about, you know, getting on law review and, um, you know, just things like that that might be able to help you in that direction. So I would say like here, the big thing is, you know, talk about it early, you know, let people know what your um, intentions are and they can help you kind of take the steps that you'll need to take to be prepared for that. I'd say that in general, whether we're talking about clerkships or other kinds of career opportunities at the BYU Law School, um, I would say that one of the reasons why our students are so successful is that they really think ahead and they really spend their time like um, throughout the three years thinking about what they want to do and making the preparations they need to get that done rather than waiting until like, hey, I've graduated, here's my GD, I don't know what to do with it now. You know, like that's not a good place to be at. So I feel like our students in part are very successful because they start working with the career development office and you know, even professors and networking with people, and they just keep that up during the three years. And then by the time they graduate, they're going on to a job that's going to make them really happy, which in my humble opinion is a definition of success with a job is doesn't make you happy. Like, do you enjoy what you're doing? Yeah. And um, our students really seem to be able to identify what they, what is going to make them happy and make them feel successful in their lives. Right. And, and it sounds like, you know, the career advising is so integrated in the program that, you know, it, it's 
not just kind of showing up at the end of their three years. It's really in the program starting in year one. So that's amazing. definitely, definitely you are going to be, yeah. We want, like, we want everybody not just to come through law school and get a degree. We want them to come through law school, get a degree, and have a purpose for it and mm -hmm. feel like that they're going on to do what they feel like are important things in their life. And so, yeah, we definitely work with them throughout the whole three years to make sure they're going to find what's going to make them happy in their lives. Yeah, amazing, amazing. And I love that support. Um, last question around, you know, life as a student at BYU Law, um, dual degrees. I know there's a couple um, and there's a dual degree with an MBA. I think there's a master's program out there and there's a t testimonials from students who are doing dual degrees, which is amazing um, on the website. Um, you know, what what's the spread of students there? Um, how, of the population of the students who are doing that and then how successful are they coming out of the program and, and you know, what kind of job opportunities are out there for, for those kind of students? I think we have quite a few students who do joint degrees. Um, I'm not sure how it might compare with other schools, but I feel like we have quite a few. Um, I would say the majority of the class is not doing a dual degree. The majority of the class is just doing a JD, but we do have quite a few. Here, the JD Mac program is pretty popular. So students who are in the Masters of Accounting program, that's a pretty popular uh, joint degree. But we also have the JD MBA, the JD MPA, which I'm noticing is becoming more popular. And then we also have the JD uh, Masters of Education. That one's less popular. We haven't really had too many people doing that one lately. Um, it's mostly the ones with the business school. Right. Um, but yeah, the students who do the joint degrees, I mean, they, they do really well. Um, they seem to be, you know, just as successful as the ones who are doing just the JD. Um, it is, uh, it will be a four-year program then. So basically you would do your JD, uh, well, it depends on how you want to do this up to you, but you would do one year in one program, classes solely in that program. The second year you would do classes solely in the other program. And then your last two years, you're going to do a mix of classes between the two programs. Wow. And um, so it gives you an opportunity to graduate a little bit sooner, um, save a little bit of money. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it seems like the students who do it are really happy with their decisions. A lot of them are people who, for instance, are interested maybe in business and also in law. Maybe they want to work in business, but have legal understanding, or maybe they want to be a lawyer who helps people um, uh, set up businesses or something like that. And so they feel like both degree. And so, you know, I feel like the people who have a purpose for doing it and kind of know why they want to do both end up being very successful. Great. And um, when you apply to a dual degree program, are you applying into the dual degree or are you applying for the JD first and then for the, the other degree? So you do ultimately have to apply to both programs and meet the requirement, you know, admissions requirements for both programs. So you can do, so you can do it in any order that you want. Uh, we prefer that you apply when you're gonna be ready to take classes for that next fall. Mm -hmm. uh, and so for instance, for the JD Mac, JD Mac program, usually um, the students will apply to BYU Law School during their first year of the, of the Mac. So they're doing their, Mac, their uh, Masters of Accounting classes. They apply to BYU Law, so then that next fall, they do BYU Law classes, and then they do two years of, of both. So you do have to apply to both schools. Uh, you'll, there's a spot for you to indicate on your application that that's what you want to do, that you're interested in the joint program. Um, but other than that, it's not like you apply to a joint program. You just apply to both programs. Got it. Wonderful. And I know and tell us that you're applying to both programs. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and I know we're at the top of the hour, but one last question for you. Um, what is your favorite part about BYU Law School and anything else you want to make sure everyone knows about BYU Law? Okay, so it's kind of hard to choose my favorite things about the law school. But I say top is going to be the students. The students are amazing. They are really smart. They like to help each other out. Uh, they want to make sure that no one feels like they're getting left behind which like I said, you hear bad stories out there about like people doing crazy stuff, stealing notes and stuff like that. Um, it just, it makes me really happy to know our students uh, are really interested in helping each other. They're genuinely interested in helping people and making the world a better place. And so um, I feel like uh, 
that a lot of our students just really have like a purpose for what they're doing in law school. And I think that makes a law school a great place for everyone. Um, I love the opportunities that BYU Law has, all the experiential learning where you get to try your hand out in a clinic or an externship or a, an academy or whatever. I think that kind of experience can be invaluable when you're going through law school. I also love the support here. Um, there's the student life, uh, career development, academic development. Our law library faculty is amazing. The faculty is amazing. You know, I just feel like I feel like honestly that the whole school comes together to try to help the students succeed. And um, I love that about the school. Um, maybe one last thing probably would be the variety. I feel like if you're really not sure what kind of law you wanna practice yet, that's fine. I really didn't know when I went into law school either. And I think it's really nice to have a broad selection of um, different areas that you could, that you could try. Um, and then you can, you know, our students go off to graduate and work in a variety of different areas as well. So I really like the, the just the offerings that we have and the ability that you have to kind of try different areas of law and see what you like. And so I think that makes law school a lot more exciting when you have a lot to choose from. A little daunting when you have to actually choose a class, but Mm -hmm. I think it makes it exciting. So anyways, I can go on and on about everything. I like laugh about it, but I think those are my top things. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. This has been a delightful conversation. I've learned so much and I'm super excited to learn more. And, you know, I've already explored the website, but I'm more excited and probably going to call admissions at some point. So you'll get a call from me. <laughs> do. Please do. Hey, anyone who wants to contact us, honestly, um, you know, check out our website. Um, see what information you can find on there. And honestly, if you just, I would say this is true for, if I have one last bit of parting advice for prospective students, this is true of any school you go to or any school you want to go to. Honestly, any questions that you have about the application process, going to law school, choosing a law school, um, programs at the law school, whatever, call the admissions office. Like whatever school it is you're interested in, just call. There are no dumb questions. Like you don't have to be embarrassed. Um, particularly if you just don't know what you're doing and you want to know, like, you know, what is the LSAT? I don't even know what that is. Like, just call and ask. We're more than happy to talk with you. I'm sure the other schools are the same way. They're more than happy to take the time to answer your questions. So don't feel like you're in the dark. Um, the law school is definitely a resource to you as you're going through your application process. Wonderful advice. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Appreciate all the information you shared. Um, and I hope everyone has a wonderful night. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Hey, Alyssa, sorry, I went over time. I couldn't stop myself, sorry. Is there anything else you need from me? I mean, I'm happy to send you um, the, the email address for the admissions office if anyone's interested in that. That would be wonderful. And I think um, when the YouTube gets, the YouTube video gets published, that will go in the description box. So that would okay. be- I will stick it in the chat here. Cool. I'll give you the main admissions email and then my email as well, and then also my phone number if anybody has questions or wants to talk. Yes, thank you. So yeah. everyone in the room, email, uh, you know, both emails are there, um, and I'm sure this will also get posted under the description box for, um, under, in YouTube. So please check it out and reach out to admissions if you have any questions. Yeah, so feel free to email us. And I realize I have to look at our website to see what the actual main admissions phone number is. So look at the website for the main admissions phone number. But yeah, but thank you so much for having me on. It was a lot of fun. Sorry we went over, but thank you. <laughs> Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.